Path and trajectory planning are advanced ways to define a robot's motion. Path planning is determining kinematic motion from starting to an ending position. Trajectory planning is similar, but includes time. So it will affect velocity and acceleration, whereas path planning is strictly just position. Typically, this is done for either the joints or the end effector because you want to make the robot avoid some kind of obstacle. So whether that's that it has to lift up an object to go over a barrier and set it down somewhere on the other side, or if there are just other things in the way, or the robot even needs to avoid itself because having something on the end effector um, depending on how the object that the robot is picking up is shaped, it might be easy for it to hit other parts of the robot if it's very large. You can also do this to smooth out the motion. So making position, velocity, and acceleration continuous so that you, you don't get any jerks or spikes in the motion. Trajectory planning is a way to do that. There are several methods for this. So pre-programming is just blind specification in the task space. You make the robot go from one point to the next to the next. Here, a robot can easily collide with its surroundings if you just make it go from start to end directly. Now, if you do teach points, then you can jog the robot using the pendants so it gets in whatever or orientation and position, to total pose, that you want it to be in so that you can make it manually go around an obstacle. Then you just save those points in the memory, you know, like make sure the robot lifts up its object high enough that it won't collide with the barrier that it's lifting it over, things like that. So the robot should take the same path every time, but you do want to make sure that you space those points uh, close enough together so that, because you don't know what the robot will do in between them. Now, a motion planning algorithm uses joint space with potential fields or sample-based methods, and it controls the entire path that the robot's going through. So not just certain points with that are connected in between, but the entire motion. So this helps a robot to avoid or approach objects in its environment using a potential field. So the procedure for this is first, identify obstacles. You gotta know what is there in the robot's environment that it needs to avoid. And what are the X, Y, Z coordinates of those items? Then identify the end effector poses. So what position and orientation does the end effector of the robot need to be at in order that it's moving from one spot to another correctly and in order that the rest of its arm won't hit obstacles that are in the way? Then finally, connect the points smoothly. So we'll go into details on this on the next slide. But if objects to avoid an approach are static, then the poses can be hard coding. If nothing in the environment moves, then you can just program the robot what it's supposed to do at the beginning. And since nothing is changing, it can always do that same path. If the objects move, then the poses must be calculated and updated using potential fields. So for this, the robot would need a sensor or a camera or something that it would know what new things came into the environment and where the existing things had moved to. Now, a potential field is basically sort of like using magnetism. Um, if you identify what objects you want the robot to avoid, those would have negative potential, um, like a repulsive force, and then whatever points you want the robot to move to would have an attractive force. Then you can get an equation of that and sort of like define an entire field that would the robot would just go through um, in order to avoid the obstacles. Now, the ways of connecting the points smoothly, there are three of these. Pointed polynomials can be done in task space or in joint space. So task space is the XYZ roll pitch yaw of the end effector being controlled, and then joint space is the individual joint angles of the robot being controlled. Rotation interpolation would be done in task space, just the rotation of the end effector. And then slurp is spherical linear interpolation, this is done in joint space using quaternions so that there are no singularities. So you can use different ones of these switching between task and joint space. You just need to use appropriate transformation in order to do that. So in the next video, we'll go over 
methods and examples for each of these. 